I've given you an intro as well. So we just go flying into it. Oh, we've already done the intro. Yeah, yeah. What did you say about me? Ah, uh, man, I just said, it. I said I was excited about it. Okay. I said, uh, I said, I, I was said I'm potentially going to talk to you about uh, your favorite meal of the day. Okay. Yeah. What yeah, is yeah. your favorite meal of the day? I said, do you know what? It's a big question. It's a fucking big this question. This is a big man. question. Do you know what? You open strong. <laughs> Dude, like, I freaking and I like know. That. That's, that's podcasting 101 because you open strong. So people are like, well, fuck, this is, they're invested now. Um, that, do you know what, man? Like I, I'm, I'm a big lunch guy, man. Whoa. Yeah, right? That is out of nowhere. Do you know nowhere. why? Because I don't really, because it's like, I work, I wake up late and then when I wake up, it's like, oh fuck, I gotta go work. So I miss breakfast. <laughs> So you wake up late by mistake? It's like, oh fuck, I gotta go to work. Yeah, I, I wake up late a lot. It's like the, the fact that this is it's crazy that I'm here. Get out of here! I swear down, bro. Get, this is wild, fam. When when no, are you and when you told me the original time was an hour before this, bro, I need. I'll be honest with you, I nearly cancelled, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I was looking for a good excuse, bro. Matt, I say, wait, what is your sleep cycle that you have? So what time do you go to bed and wake up? <laughs> I like that you think I have a sleep Dude, cycle. Yeah, man, you got a sleep bro, cycle. I just sleep when I sleep, wake when I, when I wake up, bro. <laughs> There's no cycle. You have an app, isn't it? I, I used to have an app and then yeah. it freaked me out. I didn't like it. Nah. I am, um, but no, lunch. I, do, I like a dinner, I'm actually. I'm a fuck lunch. I'm going to say dinner. Yeah, dinner's better. I hate when people say they like brunch. Commit yeah. to one, bro. I don't, I, but I think people like brunch because they can have like hash browns and stuff like that. That's why they like brunch, I think. Oh, they can have hash browns. You can't yeah. have hash browns. I don't it? think, I don't think you can have them any time of day apart from if it's brunch. Yeah, I like, do you know, I know you're, you're a regimented man, isn't it? You talk, you talk <laughs> about sleep cycles and there is no eating hash browns after a certain time in your household, bro. Wait, so give me your reading. So what time do you go to bed typically? Um, It depends if I'm do gigging. Do you go late? Yeah, because I'm gigging. And the thing is when yeah. you gig, to go home, you can't just go bed because you're still up. Do you know what I'm saying? No, it's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm coming home from work. So I don't want to just go to bed, like, you know, you watch a bit of TV or something. Mm. But maybe sometimes at three. 3 a.m.? Yeah, about 3 a.m. What are you watching until 3 a.m.? Whatever you're watching, but just later. I'm not watching anything at 3 a.m. What, well, no, what, what you watch early in the day. <laughs> yeah, because it, yeah, it's, it's like now it doesn't matter what time a show comes on, you're just going to watch it on OD anyway. I saw it? this, I saw this thing right where. You know those like those like sort of wanna be like alpha males who are on TikTok, mm. they're like, you gotta fucking yeah. wake up at like four AM yeah, if you're not yeah, doing yeah, anything. Yeah. It's like wake up at four, but go but you but you have to work until two AM. Yeah, <laughs> wake up at but, four. Yeah. But the guy was like, You gotta wake up at like I'm up every day at three AM. That's what he it's like, well, what time do you go to? You must get yeah. it. You must have seven hours sleep. Like yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. you're going to bed at like. I know six. you're talking about, you're talking about the bodybuilder guy as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's yes. like, well, how are you resting your muscles <laughs> to grow muscle? <laughs> You must be going to bed at six o'clock in the evening. You're going to bed at six in the evening. Which is actually bare lazy. <laughs> like if you went to bed, if you told me you went to bed at six, six PM, bro, like you got shit to do, bro. We go to bed at six for, bro. Yeah. Um, You're like, I go to bed at three AM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go well, to fucking bed at no, three. It's like, yeah, it's that weird thing in there that sleep is mad important, but we it's like that sort of hustle mentality of yeah. like it's the one thing they keep on telling people they have to forget about. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. money never sleeps. He goes, yeah, but money's not a human body. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's like um, it's like uh, was it James Dean's quote that I? You, do you remember Bebo back in the day? Bebo. Do you remember Bebo? It was like MySpace or it was like Facebook. Yes, that, yes, that yes, thing, yes. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, put me way back there. Yeah, Bebo, yeah. yeah, Bebo. My Bebo status was live fast, die young. Oh, yeah. it's like the oh fuck. Where'd you grow up? Rebels. Where did you grow up? <laughs> I grew up. Well, I grew up kind of in London, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was at boarding school. In, oh fuck it. So yeah, you was really fucking pushing it oh, full dude. gear, innit? <laughs> you was really driving it all in fifth <sighs> gear up in boarding school. I was a rebel, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. was Where was your boarding school? It's a school called Radley, which was just outside Oxford. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And was you, at what age was you allowed to go roam in town and that? Never. Never? Yeah. I was, Up until like, so when did you leave? 16? I I know I left it. I left at 18. So I was at a- So at 18, they weren't letting you out. <laughs> That's it was, fucking mental, Dude, bro. it was crazy, man. That's bad. Like, because I think it's like, it is like, because I went college. I didn't yeah. go sixth form. Well, you, and you're London based, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up in East London. And it's like a weird thing of, I remember there was people in school who were my age, but they still had to call people Mr. or Mrs. And they still had to say sir. And they had to ask permission to do things. When I was in college, they let you could say, oh, I'm going for a fag break. Could you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was more free. It was sort of like, it was sort of like, uni ish yeah do you know what i, mean? no, in terms I know of what like, you mean like there was it was it was quite free you could just kind of you you didn't have to go in 
If you didn't go in, I'm going to tell your mum, bro. Like, what, what do you like with authority? Oh, bad. Always been? Yeah. Since a little kid, yeah. It's always funny. I was, uh, I was writing like a new show. And there was, there was something I wanted to do in the show. So I got all my, I asked my mum for all my old school reports. Yeah. My mum kept everything. Mum's that one that keeps everything. And I was looking at my old school reports and fuck me, they were bad, man. One, one, one described, they, they called me a ringleader. <laughs> I was like, I'm in year eight. What a weird way to describe a child. Do you know what I'm saying though? Like you're describing the child. And you know that teacher must like, cause I think, cause I look back and I go, oh, a lot of those teachers were just my age now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's I like, know. and I hate some 12 year olds. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's that 12 year old I've met where I'm just what? like, what a prick. <laughs> You never met like a little kid and you just go, fuck it, what a cunt. I feel, I feel intimidated around kids sometimes. <laughs> I do, I feel intimidated. When you I feel got, scared around kids? Yeah, I feel, not what? scared, I feel like intimidated. Um, and I feel how old are you? Uh, 21. <laughs> 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 I, 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 and I had Bebo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I am 34. Okay. Yeah. Are you secret about your age or something? No, I'm not oh. secret at all. Um, but how you, old are you? I'm 32. Yeah. And I think we are just kind of like, we're at that weird age. We're, we're the same generation. Yeah. We, we're not old fucks, but we're not them. No, exactly. And we're kind of one of them things that sometimes- This is a weird age. Yeah, it's, and it's the first time in my life I've felt culturally, in terms of the new culture, lost. In terms of, like, I kind of don't understand what the fuck they're talking about. Like, they'll be like, oh, you know this thing? And I go, I'm, <laughs> no. No, and I don't know. the first time it's ever happened. Cause you know, we, we, we was on the pulse, mate. Dude, I was, I, I yeah. had my finger on the pulse all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, I don't like, the other day we were talking about being, if you, a cap, you know what cap means? Yeah, I know what cap means. You know yeah. you don't. Yeah, I do. Okay, I that's- you're lying and shit, right? Oh yeah, yeah. all right, shit. I mean, I'm more on the pulse than you. No, you're not. I'm, yeah, no, are, you, the, are you, you fucking you, kidding me? I'm, uh, I, I do this podcast with loads of different ages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm freaking down, man. Yeah, down, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're down bad. That's <laughs> no, uh, but no, it's the, it's the first. Yeah, it's how does that work with comedy though? Okay, you so because it, like, okay, because when you're doing stand up, right, mm. the the aim, I suppose, right, is you want to you want to try and attract all ages because that's a good thing to attract. Or do you not? Or do you focus on a certain age group because that's the way that you can you can relate much more. <sighs> I don't. Cause I would say that you relate to quite a wide range. Yeah, but it's not out of trying to. Because I think the problem is- I think is you try to. I don't, no, generally, <laughs> because I think if you decide that it stops being honest, good comedy, in yeah. my opinion, or not even good, good, good's a, a bad word to use, but I think it's it stops for me. I can't write honestly about that because it's kind of like, I just got to write what I think's funny and whoever comes to that, comes to that. Yeah. And I think when you start being like, oh, I'm going to write this so I get this audience and write that so I get that audience. It's like, you might financially recoup off that, but I think it, I wouldn't feel good. And I don't think I could re keep on recreating it. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I maybe hit once or twice with it, but I would never keep recreating it. All I can recreate is something I enjoy making. So I, I try not to like- That's great. Do you know what I'm saying? No, like yeah, I, but that's, I, I find that sometimes hard to do when- I don't know why I do. Like, like it's we got bills, and then you start. You, I think, I think as well, falling we, into those traps, yeah, right? Because you, you enjoy, could we, we start doing this because we enjoy it, yeah, or for whatever reasons, and then after a while, when it becomes your pay packet, you start realizing, and then you get responsibilities because, like, but we're in the same age. We're we're, we're in our thirties exactly. now. It was all good in your twenties, running around, and then you kind of go, ah, you know. Tomorrow seems like it's never gonna come. Yeah. But then now we're old. I think you said you're married, right? Yeah, you know I'm married. I mean? yeah. yeah. And it's like you know, and it's it's tough, right? You know, you got responsibilities now, but and I think it's um, people say thirties is a good age. Thirties is a good age, but it's also a tough age because it's like yeah. you, you start to you start to having to be serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and are you in a relationship, married? I'm not. I'm dating, but not. You're dating, married, right? right? No. When you you go into relations, you go you like I'm married and stuff, but I still feel really young. Yeah, and uh, but then it's like all these sort of responsibilities and stuff. It's like we spend our life mm. like trying to find responsibilities, mm. and then when we get the responsibilities, we try and run away from yeah, them. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I think you search for some purpose, and I think a responsibility is the purpose. And I think it's like you know, it's like you know, I want to be married and have kids. That's your that's your like goal. And then when you get them, it's it's not just a thing you. Once you reach it and then it's over. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like you looked for a wife and you found a lovely woman, then you married her and it's yeah. like, all right. It's like, no, marriage <laughs> takes work. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you know, it but you know what I'm saying work. though? It's like, yeah. it's a constant thing. And I think that's kind of the thing that, you know, I forget sometimes. It's like, oh, just cause I've achieved the thing. 
it doesn't mean that it ends there. It's like, I've got the achievement. I've got the medal. It's like, no, it's, then it's the new thing of working in that. To, talk, talk, yeah, talk to me about religion because yeah. you 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 say you're Buddhist, right? No, I was. I, I I was I was playing with it. I was more. That was more about. See, what happens is sometimes you'll say something on stage and someone takes it and writes it down and then it becomes true. <laughs> okay, okay. Do you know what I'm saying? What well, the joke was about me going to a Buddhist center. Yeah, and I went Buddhist center for like maybe like I was going for maybe like two years. Really? Yeah, I stopped going. I, I, Why like, did you stop going? Uh, just life got in the way and stuff, and yeah. you know. And I was sort of like, when it comes to Buddhism, there's certain aspects that I liked, and there's some aspects I just didn't believe in. You know, yeah. and that's the thing about me about religion. I think it gets to a certain point where we could have, a, you know, you talk to a religious person, whether it be you know any Abrahamic religion or whatever religion, and it's like you know you have a logic about debate and philosophy and this and well you know, how could you be here if they didn't exist? And it, you know, and you get into all these debates and then really what it comes down to is I believe it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Once you strip away all the arguments, really it comes down to, it's because I believe this happened mm -hmm. or this is true. And I just, I just don't really believe in it. <laughs> you know what I'm like, it's just like, I don't believe it's true. Like I just don't. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just, I just don't. Like, you, the logic <laughs> starts. Actually, listen, and then, that's like, when it starts, isn't, yeah. it, isn't it? I just don't actually believe yeah, it. Yeah, I just don't believe it. <laughs> I just don't believe it. I just it. don't. <laughs> like, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Your, your, your logic is sound, but I just don't believe that happened. <laughs> Everything you're saying, I do not believe it happened. And so it's like, I don't. Um, so, this is aspects of Buddhism I liked. And I do think, you think. Do you think it's important, though? I like the practice of. Is it important? Yeah. To what? Well, it, we talked about purpose earlier, just right? Just society or yeah, just... Well, maybe what it does, I right? It built civilizations and stuff. I mean, it definitely had a purpose. I don't know. I felt Do you I, think it gives people a purpose though? Yeah. Because what happens yeah. then is like, you, we sort of, you know, we have all these questions right in life, mm. right? Okay. Do we get married? Do we not? Do we mm. uh, have kids? Do we not? Do we get this job? Do, what, what is our whole point of being here, right? And actually, if you bring religion into your life, perhaps that gives you that sort of total purpose well we're doing it for a higher mm. being we're doing it towards a higher purpose yeah. and actually so then you can kind of just flow through life doing different things and also it teaches you good and bad and it's supposedly and all these different things yeah. like, well, how have I, we got I, I believe, this is big no, man. this is big yeah but this no, but is I, big i think you can find sort of philosophical morality without it do you know what i mean like i don't i don't think it's sort of like the be all and end all i think it helps certain people do you mm. know what i'm saying though no? yeah it's sort of like it's like anything. I think, you know, because it's religion and we sort of put it on this thing as like, it's that. Then, you know, it's, we sort of look at it and revere it more when it's like, there's a lot of things that help people that don't help other people. And yeah. we sort of just accept that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so like, you know, like you might be going, I'm stressed. I like swimming. I, I fucking hate swimming. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But that's your thing. So I think it's like, just because it's religion, we've got to put it on this like, when really it's just like anything. It's like, it works for some people and it doesn't work for others. You know it's I mean? quite a good way of thinking about it. It's just, it just doesn't. For me, it's just not my thing. Like I never grew, and I think you know. But then, why it, did I you turn to? Why did you turn to Buddhism then for a bit? Because it's sort of like out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, it's the one where it's kind of just like you didn't like Scientology. No, <laughs> I feel like no. you could have been. Into oh, that. I think. Do you know what? I think <laughs> if I did, I'd go deep, <laughs> yeah. and I'd be like, I'd be like, I want to hit the highest level. <laughs> Like yeah. I'll be wearing You're that. Not paying for those Bro, levels. You'll be, I'll be there standing next to Tom Cruise in the Admiral <laughs> fucking shirt with a fucking hat saluting. And, but I'll be deep, bro. I'll be deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if there's an Illuminati, sign me up, fam. I'm deep, bro. Right? I'm saying. But um, yeah, I'm going I, deep next yeah, to yeah, Tom yeah. Cruise. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going deep, fam. I'm gonna be that, you know, like when people try to film him and there's like people harassing the filming. People. Yeah, they're, they're, I'll film, be they're filming like that. <laughs> yeah. I'll be that guy harassing people. <laughs> like, I'm going, yeah, yeah, What's yeah. he doing with the camera? Oh, yeah, Jamal is a Scientologist <laughs> enforcer now. <laughs> Just harassing people, bro. No, um, I think out of all the religions, like, it just seems like the one that's just the most chill in terms of like, ah, yeah, 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 fine. And I kind of liked that. And it was like, and there's also and I, reincarnation. I, yeah, but I enjoyed the practice of meditation. That's that's that was most of it for me. Was the practice of going to meditation and going to um, uh, um, fuck so man, I my brain's freezing. Um, that's because that's because you meditated too much. Yeah, yeah. Going but to, just got meditation classes and sort of um, you know and being, like sound being healing. present. Being present is and key. being present. And and I thought I struggled with that for a long time. And I think going because really. For me, going to the Buddhist center was the act of 
setting something out. So it's like at 1 p.m. I'm going here and for an hour, I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not thinking about my career. I'm not thinking about my relationships. I'm not thinking about anything. For that hour, all I'm doing is focusing on my breathing and I'm not thinking about anything else. And for that, that's the purpose it served for me. Do you know what I mean? It's just that for that time of the day, that was purely just to be present and to breathe. Because the thing, you know, even just... you. you even just the act of breathing, we do it so normally yeah. that you don't even think about yeah. breath. Do you know what I'm saying? No, you don't I think about breathing in heavily and you know what I'm saying? Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Like we, we, we don't think Dude, about it. I know that it's something like we're meant to be taking something like, um, I think it, I, I, I'm going to butcher the numbers, but we're yeah. meant to be doing something like, I don't know, 28,000 breaths. Mm. Um, a day or yeah. something cool, something crazy. Yeah, that's how much we got to do a day. It's like you got to drink this much water. Yeah. I ain't drinking that much water. <laughs> no, Fuck I, off. Some days I go, that's too much. much water, bro. Man, if I get, yeah, I'd, like, I would oh, drink a lilt. Over yeah, yeah. A <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, give me a can of lilt, bro. If I'm in the desert, bro, give me some lilt, bro. We good to go, bro. What the fucking give me water, bro? Because sometimes this water, drinking water is dead. <laughs> You know what I mean? Though? You know, sometimes you like you drink a water and just go, bro, I'd rather have a lil. I, I, I listen. <laughs> I listen lil was the funniest kind of juice yeah, you could have yeah, said yeah, as well. So I don't good. know why that was funny as hell, lil. But going back to, so the meditation, right, is true. Yeah. We're meant to take like 28,000 breaths, but apparently what we're doing is like 42,000. Mm. So we're all yeah, here the whole yeah, time. Deep breaths. Yeah, but, and also, look, speak openly as you want to. Typically when people talk about medicine, I've always tried to do it. Mm. But that that sort of helps with the anxieties and mm. and your head being a bit noisy, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you, have you? Yeah, yeah, I've got like a loud brain. Same. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's that's one of the reasons I'm up to 3 a.m. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that's when it kicks off. You know what I mean? That's when Talk the, to me open that's up, when like, the head movie starts. Oh, man. I, I, I Recently at the moment, since getting married, actually, mm. um, yeah, anxiety has been a lot higher. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes You know when it just kicks in and it's like, mm. you you think you sort of conquered it. Mm. You think you've passed it and you're like, this is, yeah, I've got this. I've but got why this. do you think you passed it? Because your uh, your insecurities are less, your oh, your yeah, yeah, yeah. your uh, your head is less loud, your OCD is less, whatever the things you're like, yeah, I'm yeah, over, yeah, I don't yeah. care. About it. And then suddenly, boom, it just comes back. Yeah, it's a weird. Do you know, I think about this the other day? It's weird that people with angst or people with insecurities or people with a sort of drawn to the same jobs we do, which create so much of it. Do you know what I'm saying though? But we're sort of exactly that. We're magnetically drawn to it even though it's something that causes so much of the issue. Do you know what I'm saying? No, because yeah. you're kind of putting yourself out there. So if you're insecure about, say if you're insecure about your looks, yeah. you're on TV, you're going to get messages of people telling you. <laughs> you look like shit. Yeah, it just is. You yeah. know what I mean? It's kind of part and parcel of it and we kind of accept it, but it's that weird thing of we're magnetically drawn to the thing that is causing it. Well, give I mean? that to me then. So, you know, you, you were known for stand up. Yeah. And... That or, you know, when I take it, talk to a lot of comedians, a lot of the time that comes out is that, okay, it, we, I, I felt, you know, if I spoke, I spoke to Ivo Graham, I think the other day, who said such uh, a great thing. Ivo, Ivo, oh man, isn't great he? Great guy. Great. Funny. Really funny, funny, but really good guy too, man. Really funny. Oh, man. Really good. Yeah. He said, when I started doing comedy, I just suddenly came into um, this place where these different sort of misfits from different places came together. Mm. But that sort of counteracts what you said, because your report says you were a ringleader. So you typically probably were a bit, you were popular maybe, you were you were a bit of like a leader in a sense, which goes against what some comedians are. Comedians are typically a bit self-conscious, a bit awkward. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't I was, say you're well, awkward. See, you Does know, that make sense? I think, yeah, no, I know, exactly, I know exactly what you're saying. I think I was a introverted extrovert. And I think that, um, it, I sort of like, even though I wasn't, you know, I can sort of come out of my show, I can talk to people, I can do all them things. It's still, my head was still not that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And mm. I think I, overcompensated on a lot of it because I felt this way mm. I would do you know what I'm saying mm. you know what I'm saying I was because I felt small I wanted to be big yeah do you, you, know you so overcompensate yeah your so thing, I overcompensated so you, you'd be louder you'd and, be funnier and you'd I be think this. with the school thing I mean I was sort of like a uh, uh, really young uh they I got diagnosed with uh, a diagnosis I got I got told I had dyslexia and dyspraxia 
from a young, young age. What age were you? I was in primary school. They sort of guessed it in primary school. And, but like when I got- That's almost embarrassing at that yeah, age. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why it is. It was when I got diagnosed with it, they, it was still like they, okay. So you had the, in the, in the, so that was like maybe the early 2000s. So in like the 80s, 90s. So in the 80s, it never existed. Mm. In the 90s, they kind of knew it existed. In the early 2000s, they knew it existed, but they didn't quite know nothing about it. Yeah. And it's like, when I was a kid, it was, um, it, it, like if you got dyslexia now, it's like you have a gift. But when I had it, they put you in special ed. Do you know what I mean? And- uh, You were seen as like dumb. Like. Yeah, and I, there was a lot of, I remember like there would be a lot of like, um, trial stuff. So I would like, you know, they put me on certain like, uh, like cod liver oil tablets, or I would have to go to this place in London. And it was, they were trying to find a cure for it, basically. Really? Is the sort of energy it was. And I remember like, I'd have to do a lot of things and I'd hated it and I would have to get tests. And I was always getting tested for everything. And then they would tell me I had some and then I didn't, you know, you have ADHD, you don't have ADHD, you have it. And it was just like a lot of that. That's confusing. Yeah, yeah. And it was, and I really hated it and it was uncomfortable. And I remember like, they wanted me to wear these special shoes. And I'm like, and I'm just like, I'm not fucking wearing them shoes. What like, shoes? Like, cause I had this Brexit and it's something to do with your muscle. Okay. And so basically like, there'll be times where I'm walking, say me and you're walking down the street, I might veer into you. Yeah, I know a lot of people who yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah that's quite I, common in loads yeah, of ways. Yeah, so I veer into you and stuff like that. So they want me to wear these like clap shoes, bruv. And back in my day, <sighs> bruv, you couldn't even wear Reebok, bruv. You had to wear Nike. If I didn't see that tick, you're getting smoked, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Like, bruv, they are coming for you, bruv. You better wear them Nikes, bruv. You know what I'm saying? I know back you probably wore Donny and that, but you had to wear Nike. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bubba had high tech squash. But like you had to wear Nike. My green flash. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you had to wear a Nike. So I was like, but I ain't fucking wearing, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You had to wear your shoes. No, I wouldn't wear them. I refuse. <laughs> and they were like, you know, it's going to get worse. <laughs> I'll say, bro, I'll be in a wheelchair with the fucking Nikes, bro. I don't give a shit. He said, what the fuck are you talking to, bro? I don't care. And then, so I would have, and they would want me to put insoles in my shoes. And yeah. I didn't want to, and you just want to be. Normal. You, you, what be, you consider as normal, right? That's you what fit you in. consider normal, you know? And, and I remember they would like, uh, and then when I went secondary school, they would try to like, you know, and they put me in like a lot of low sets, you know, somewhat special ed classes. And, uh, and it's frustrating because you're, you know, you're not, and, and, and also it's just, you know, being told, you know, I remember this is, this was like that. I, I think I might say this on another podcast, but I'll tell it again. Is there was a defining moment. And it's one thing I tell you about the school reports is from year seven to eight, yeah. it was all like, he's a bit misbehaving, but he's fine. But then there was a change and I, you could see it in the school reports is I was, it was a French class. I remember this teacher, we had a substitute teacher and she uh, called me behind class and she goes, uh, I want to talk to you behind the class. So I spoke to her and then she said to me, uh, what do you want to be when you're older? And this is young, everyone wants to be a lawyer or fucking something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and she, I said, lawyer, doctor, I don't know. And she goes, uh, with this handwriting, you'll be nothing, right? And I'm, and then from then you could see on the school report the change. Do you know what I mean? There was like a big change. And I think, negative or negative? Negative, negative. negative. Oh, it was, it was, it was yeah, like no. a positive. Yeah, 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 <laughs> oh, from then I really, <laughs> I really pulled my socks up and fucking started working. <laughs> No. So was it positive? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I really do it. I took the criticism. <laughs> no. I took it on board. No, no, no. That no, is no. It was It was over. And then from then it was always suspension, you know, just gave up really. And it was, yeah, and I, and I think, you know, and that, and to going back to insecurity, you know, that was, you know, and I just felt like nothing for a long time. So even though I was, you know, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, I was probably, well, you just, I, I think popular is a, a weird word, but, but you know, but you, a, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't, you know, I was sort of You were in the crowd, you were in yeah, the crowd. Yeah, I was outgoing and, you know, but in the back of my mind, and it was, I guess a lot of it was to be, you know, funny or to be whatever. You want to be noticed, so you had to find yeah, something. Yeah, and also to kind of, if I could be everything else, yeah. they wouldn't notice this. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, it's so funny. You, you're, you're trying to fit in so much in so many ways yeah. that you don't want anyone to see your true self. Nothing. And you and you just, and you know, and just, yeah, really sort of like um, acting up and stuff. It's so funny. I, I, I had that for so long. I, I, where you you fight so hard for people not to actually find out who you mm. truly are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you, someone said to me, you have sort of four different personalities, one with your family, one with your friends, one with yourself, and one with your partner. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, you yeah. do, and you, you sort of a chameleon in these different places. Yeah. It's very hard to be... 
yourself. Yeah. And you're only kind of really yourself when you're by yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, true, genuine self. Yeah, which is tricky, right? It is tricky. It is tricky. And I think there's not, sometimes there isn't something wrong with it. I think you kind of got to keep something for yourself. A yeah. little bit. I, 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 I'm, I'm, and I don't mean like your true self. I think you should be your true self. But I think there is certain things that you can kind of, you know, because I, I think you can burn out. Hold things back. Yeah, well, I think, I think <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. burn out. I, I, that is true. Being everything all the time. And I think sometimes it's it's all right just to, and then, you know, and then, and give it, and, and then when you do give it to, or let someone see it, it's someone that, you know, is sort of warranted to see it, not just oh, give it to deep, everyone. No, no. That is, that, you're talking about love right there. Love you're talking man. about you're love. You're the fucking married one. You, you're the right. fucking hey, lover, man. Listen, mate, you're talking about love right yeah. there. Yeah, I gotta oh, wait for that one person to open up. Did to you? you uh, where did you get married? In Soda Grande in Spain. Mm. And it was, it That's was, nice. yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, it, yeah, it was, it was just incredible. But what happens is that you go through this like huge sort of process or like yeah. big moment, and then it finishes, and you're like, whoa, yeah, like that. They're, they're sort of. Do you feel different? Uh, I, I feel in terms a, of that, the relationship, I feel a little relationship bit different, feel different, but you have something called wedding blues. Like mm. you really ha like have them because you're, you're leading up towards this amazing thing and then it finishes and you're like, okay. And you, mm. for a year, well, in our sense, for a year, we were sort of organizing this thing and then yeah. you don't have that. Yeah, I so, guess it was such like a, um, such a big part of your and life. And such a big life moment. Yeah. It's something you're looking a, forward to. Yeah. I want to know though, also with, you, you said you, expulsion and susp or suspension stuff like that. How bad a route did you go down? Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. No. No, I mean. But then when did you find comedy? Because that is the thing that then you go, okay, this is what I like. I, firstly, I get this instant feedback. Uh, Secondly, I get to use, I get to be like a wordsmith and things like that and use funny things to connect different people. Yeah. And and finding something that I think comedians are amazing because when they find that, they know they like it. That's an amazing moment. Yeah, but I mean, I think I did my first show at like 16, 17. I did oh, like that's a, so young. Yeah, I did like a little open mic and I didn't do comedy again for a while. And then maybe around 18, 19, 19, I started doing it again. And then I started taking it seriously around 21. And then I went full time at like 23. And um, yeah. What is the moment that you decide to go full time? Because also to tangent, you went to Salford University. Yeah. You dropped out because you had blood poisoning from yeah, a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. There's another story as well, basically that. Give me these stories. This is oh what, yeah, so okay. I can tell you, I'll tell you all of them. There was one, so there was, this is one story is they, so the course I did had a comedy section for the third years. Okay. And by this time I, was, I had done comedy for a couple of years, but I had moved to Manchester because I wasn't getting no work in London. So I moved, cause I heard at the North, there was all these gigs that paid and I got there and no one wanted to fucking book me. <laughs> and so I went, so fit. It's, it's like the, the gold, like yeah. the goal, like thing, like, oh, if we go up there, there's going to be loads of it. Yeah, Let's yeah. Go. It's like you think you're going to go to Zion and it's just a barren wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> so then, is a utopia yeah, of, like, of fucking, comedy. <laughs> yeah. And then, so I went there and I fucking, I hardly went in. I weren't really doing the course. And then they said, at the third years did like stand up and Jason Manford came in to like watch the third years and give him notes. And then he was like, any of the first years want to do stand up? And so I went up and it was just in front of the class and I did like two, three minutes. And then uh, Jason Manford just looked at me, he goes, yeah, just quit uni. He goes, you're a comic, oh, fuck with it, fuck this off. And he goes, there's no point you being here. Like you're, you're a comic. He goes, he goes, any notes slow down a bit, yeah, just quit. And um, that is a wicked story. Yeah, yeah. He told me to quit uni. Yeah, he said he said he said you're a comic. He goes, it's not for you. He goes, comic. You be a comedian. He goes, you're there. He goes, you know. That is really cool. Yeah. And and so wait, hang. What you were studying? What? Uh, it's all about acting with comedy practice, but it was yeah. just an acting course, really. I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you what the course was because I never went in. <laughs> like I think I, I think I did. Honestly, I think I went to like two lectures. I did. I did. I was theatre. Where did prom, you go? I theatre prom as a Leeds, and honestly, uh, I, I, man, I, I reckon as well four lectures. Yeah, about my, four lectures. I didn't have a library card to my last term of my last year. I didn't have Damn, a library card. That's funny as shit. Yeah, I didn't. I, I just for me again, it was just like. Life was experience. it all performance? All performance. Yeah. And, and some was written as well, but I just, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but that's amazing. So Jason Manford, not knowing you, it's, yeah. it's just, what I find amazing is that individuals like this can have such an impact mm. on someone's life. So you then decide to quit. No, no. Cause I had like, that was sort of midway through the year. 
And I'd sort of- Did that give you a boost though? Were you like, shit? Yeah, I was kind of in my mind, I was tapped out. And I kind of was like, nah, I might quit. And then what happened was is, I got this tattoo done. And it's a fucking shit tattoo. And I got this awful tattoo. <laughs> what is your one is it? And I a guy looking into a black hole wearing a tie. So you gotta remember, I'm 21. So I sort of got this tattoo because I was like, I'm never gonna work in corporate, man. Like I was qualified. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I'm so wait, this is like, fuck you to the corporate yeah, world. Yeah, fuck you to the corporate <laughs> world. Like I was qualified, like like they were that they were begging to make me work in a bank. Like people were like, please, please, Jamali, come work as a bank manager. And I'm like, nah, bro, I live this art life. Like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought we got it done to impress a girl or some shit. So I got this done and uh, it got in. And then I remember I was at my, um, I was in my dorm and yeah. I had this roommate. It was like a stoner guy who played bare loud music. <laughs> and I started getting that like, really sort of sweaty and like, and sort of like a date, like tired. Mm -hmm. And I was in my kitchen and I just blacked out and I banged my head so hard on the concrete floor that the guy heard it over his music and he sort of he came in, he goes, you all right? I said, yeah, man. I just banged my head like, and he goes, oh, fuck, you better have a nap. <laughs> so, oh <laughs> my God. And I was like, I said, I said, that's a good idea. Yeah, but, this is a great idea. Yeah, so then I, I went to bed and I was like hallucinating. I was waking up in sweats and like, like really fucking like, you know, having fever dreams and like, and I rang the ambulance a 111. Were you scared or no? No, it's not scared. I was just a bit just like, I thought I had the flu. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I died and nearly, I'd nearly died a couple of times. I can tell you that in a bit, but. Did you start throwing these little nuggets yeah, in? What well, the hell is going on? This is epic. Okay, go, go, go. This one Podcasting first. 101, both. Yeah, here we um, go. But yeah, no, so I, um, yeah, so then I just like sweating fever dreams and shit. And then, uh, and then I called 111 and they came to the uh, dorm. And they came in my room and they were like, have you taken any drugs? I've gone, yeah, but I, it's not <laughs> that. And they were like, okay, all right. And they looked at my arm and my arm was like, lit like twice the size. And they go, what the fuck happened to your arm? And I go, ah, oh, it's got this tattoo done. It looks sick, in it? And then she was like- <laughs> Fuck you to the corporate yeah, world. <laughs> she was like, that's like crazy infected. Like you have to come to hospital. So I went to the hospital and they go, yeah, I've got cellulitis. So I got blood infection. And then- uh, How bad is that? pretty bad yeah if I, if I didn't go i could have lost my arm it could have gone gangrene and all that shit so i've had cellulitis and it's bad if it starts going all around your system or yeah. some shit like that so i've got that and then the, they've put me on an iv trip and they've sent me home and i've literally made it outside and i've come back in and i've gone like and i just went blind like i've just gone blind and i've gone I've, and i've gone up to the desk here and i said i said fuck i've gone i said i've gone blind and the lady's like, you're still gonna have to fill out a form and sit down. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm blind. And she goes, no, no, I understand you've gone blind, but you have to sit down and wait for a doc. And, yeah. and then, and then I've just, blind. and then I've just literally woke up in a bed. So apparently I've just blacked out. And then they've gone like, why the fuck did you go home? And I was like, no, send me home. Why did they send you home? I don't know. That is crazy. Yeah, they sent me home though. And they were just like, ah, yeah, yeah. just give me your IV drip. They said, oh, you're just dehydrated, don't worry. And then they were like, no, you have blood infection. This could have killed you. So then how long are you in hospital for? Not long, about three, four days. That no, is no, long no, no, though. Sorry, sorry, about two days, about two days. And then what happened was is I had, just before all this happened, I had entered a competition, comedy competition, mm. uh, funniest student competition, which is like the true one, which is in terms of competition, it's a pretty good one. And then I entered it and I uh, got the email saying your heat's tomorrow. And I was in <laughs> hospital. So I went and did the heat and I was still high on drugs where they gave me. And I think I still had like, even just had the little- Little tag in the Yeah, 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 yeah. I had the little, you know, they give you the yeah, little- uh, plug it in, yeah. And, I, and everyone was like, man, your style's so laid back, but I was just high. <laughs> and I, I won the heat, I won the heat. <laughs> Style uh, is so laid back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, your, your style is so chill, bro. And I was like, nah, but I was, I was rocking, like I was rocking. And then I won the the semi. Well, I got through on the heat, got through on the semis, and I sort of said to myself, I said, I got into the final, and the final was at Edinburgh Fringe. And I sort of said to myself, if I do well at this, I don't need to win. As long as I get an Asian or I get something, I'll stay doing it. But if nothing happens, then I'm going to quit because this just wasn't working for me. I'll, I'll go uni and I'll do a course, you know, and I end up winning. 
And uh, and I didn't think I was going to win because I remember there was a lady who worked there and she reminds me of the story of the time I see her. It's like, she had known I'd won and we're all backstage mm. and she had known I'd won. So she's like, all right, guys, everyone, everyone stand up. Like, you know, we're about to release the breath. And I was just laying on the floor. <laughs> yeah. And then she was like, all right, Jamali, can you stand up? And I was like, ah, no, nah, not for me, thanks. <laughs> and, uh, and I won. And then- Did you think you were good? Or did you not know your-, your... I, don't, I don't think I knew. I think even now, sometimes I doubt it, you know? And I've done, I've achieved enough to probably not have that. Fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've achieved you know, enough to kind of go, maybe at some I'm, point. At some, do you know what, maybe. But yeah, I've, I've just, I've, I think I'm my own worst critic and I'm yeah. always very hard on myself. When, especially when it comes to comedy, because it's something I actually uh, care about. So I think I, I, I'm probably very harsh on myself. Um, it's one of the things, that's one of the people, things that people would tell me the most, you should be a bit more easy on yourself. I think comedy is one of the hardest things in the world. I I, I truly do. Like, because I, comedy and music maybe because- You've done stand up, right? I, yeah, I, I, don't, you, I did your, like- your mate, your mate used to do it. Um, Francis. Yeah, yeah, Francis did it Yeah, yeah, because I know, did he still do it? I don't think he still does it. Oh, okay. He I just know. did these like one-liner jokes. Do you, I never saw, I, do you know, I, I saw him in passing at like Top Secret Comedy Club. Yeah. Like I'd see him in passing, but I never, like I met, I met him, but outside the comedy. I but I think it's one of those things where you, like, it's not one of, it's definitely one of those things you have to commit to. It. If you want to mm -hmm. do it, you have to commit. It's an art. You How have to learn. How did you do it for? Oh man, I did two gigs. I did oh, three gigs. I did one gig, smashed it because it was my first one. Yeah. Second gig was the worst thing in my entire life. <laughs> where was it? It was at the um, comedy store. See, this is the thing though. Fuck. You shouldn't be doing the comedy store at your second man, gig. Man, I did this. My first gig was comedy store. My it was a charity gig. It was charity gig. Ah. And the second gig was like this, it was just horrendous. And it was just, oh my. Oh my God, so Why awful. did you do it? Because I think I like challenging myself. I think um, I, I I have that bug as well. I love entertaining people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a bug. Yeah. It's a bug. It, like I, I spoke, think you did performance in uni and stuff, so you wanted to be like man always on stage and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I in front of the camera, behind the camera. I I don't know. What's your like, favorite? Like, was you do like bear shit? Mm. Like I remember there was one TV show where you're like a fed in that, bro. Like you're yeah, doing bad murder shit. successful. Yeah, you're just doing oh bad stuff. My God. What's your favorite thing you do? Like what's what's the <clears> one <throat> thing where it's like, cause it's like for me, there's one, there's one thing this one comedian said one time. He goes, when you do comedy, he goes, I love comedy so much and comedians love comedy so much where you're not paying us for the gig. We do that for free. You're paying me for the travel and the bullshit. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the only reason you're paying us really. The gig yeah. I'll do for free, but you're paying me to, to come out of my house, to drive all the way to Wales, to go wherever and do the thing. Is yeah. there anything that like, you're like, I- I think I think it's this. What's the one thing? I, think it, I think it's podcasting because I think maybe a bit like you, I was I was bad at school. I was distracted the whole time. My mm. reports were bad. Like so many things that you say, like similar to like what I was gonna do. I swear this at boarding school, they ain't having that shit. Mate, the, the, my, 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 the teacher can send you to bed fam. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also this is the fucking thing. I spoke to my mom about this. My mom was like, she was so angry about the school because they they paid this money for me to go to the school and my grades were bad. It's just like, fucking, you, we're paying for this shit. Like yeah, what, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. And and for me, so I never learned, but the way that I, I learn now is like I sit with people like you mm. and you'll say your stories or say your views or whatever it is. And for me, that's how I learn. And I, mm. and, and I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I love cool, it man. more than anything. Yeah. I, I really do. You, you mentioned though that you have, Nearly died. Yeah, uh, I got so, uh, I remember I was doing shows. I was going to Australia. Just quickly, the blood thing, did you ever sue the tattoo guy? Nah. He just sue. left it. I know, sue, what? Sue, my sue man, what? My man thinks I've got legal team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at uni and you think I've just got like a legal team, I can just call them that, bro. Like, I love it, you just left it. Oh, whatever. Yeah, like, it's what it is. Yeah. No, I think it was more my fault. Cause I was like, uh, I wrapped it a lot because it was my first tattoo. Yeah. So it's like a big one. So I was wrapping it. I think I wrapped it for too long and I was putting <laughs> different creams on it. Like I fucked up. It's I've got, cool though. Since the quint, like, <laughs> and since then I've got a bunch of other ones and I'm not, you know. Uh, RIP, RIP Tootsie. Yeah. Is that a, is that a friend? Uh, no, my cat dad. And so I've got top cat with a spliff. <laughs> top cat smoking a zoo and that. <laughs> was that a friend? Nah, bro. <laughs> Just my cat. Yeah, my cat died. So I got a uh, top cat smoking a zoot. R.I.P. Tootsie. I do, I'll be honest, I didn't really like the cat that much. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, okay, wait, so, what, so you nearly died. So what happened? All right, so I can't wait. I'm doing shows in, 
it's not something like that. Or is it, it, and it, it kind of links back around actually, but I was doing shows in Asia. Yeah. Because I was going from, I was going to Australia to do the festival. So I'm doing shows in uh, Asia. Where about and I'm, I, I do my first show in Jakarta. So I'm meant to go to Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia. No, Singapore, Vietnam, Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing a tour. And so I, I do Indonesia and I get there and I'm feeling kind of sick. But I'm like, oh, I'm just jet lagged. Get there, do the gig. Uh, Indonesian expats, people that live, British people that live in Indonesia are fucking mad. Mental people. They're just fucking psychos, man. Yeah, there's drinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I remember there was one, there was one lady and I had to threaten her. I said to her, brother, I'll rip up a brunch coupon in front of you right now if I make you cry, bro, if you're crazy. <laughs> and so did the gig and I flew to Thailand mm. and I'm just feeling like, it's like the weirdest sickness I've ever felt in my life where my head's sick, but my body feels fine. Okay. Like, but I feel sick in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But not in my, not in my body. I'm mean, actually gonna say I feel sick in my head in this, <laughs> in this day and age, that's a bad connotation. <laughs> okay. But I did feel like in the, in groggy the... and weird. Yeah. So I've uh, gone hospital. And the ladies took my um, nose thing and said, you got influenza, you got the flu. I'm like, are you sure? She goes, yeah, 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 you got the flu. She gave me some tablets, whatever, send me away. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse, man. Like, And then I've gone downstairs and classic Jamali, I've gone blind again. <laughs> So I've just gone blind. So I've just, I've just gone blind. Well, you keep but this is this is blind. this is the smacker though. This is how British I am. This is how British I am. I've gone blind and I've collapsed on the floor. Well, and the guy and, I, and the guy said, "Let me go get you some water." So he went and got me some a glass of water. And I went, ah, "Is that from the tap?" <laughs> <laughs> I need bold water. Like I need bold. Fed this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need bold. Like I'm dying. So. I've got, so I've, so the guy's like, you need to go hospital. So I've gone hospital, but I've had to take a tuk-tuk and I'm negotiating with a tuk-tuk man. Oh so he's like, he's like, that'll be 600 baht. And I go, ah, oh, no, that's like 450. <laughs> so I've gone to the, so I've gone to the hospital and then the doctor's there and I've gone to a different hospital. Yeah. And this is meant to be the good one. This is like the American hospital. Where, yeah. And so I've gone there and the guy's like, ah, oh, um, you, you got influenza. And he goes, what I'll do is I'll give you an injection and you'll feel better. So he gave me an injection in my thigh and he goes, feel better, right? And I go, no. And he goes, oh, okay. Well, come back if you feel worse. I've gone back to my hotel. Are you fucking and serious? And the, the, it can only be described as there's like a claws, like, like claws are grabbing into my heart, right? And it's squeezing my heart and, and I'm blacking out and I'm, I know I'm going. And, and I've, all I've done, so I've gone, okay. So I've texted my mum because I, because I, because the hotel, the promoter booked me with shit. So I booked another hotel. So no one knows where I am. Mm. And, you know, and you can go missing. Yeah. Out there. You know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, totally. can, go, you can go missing. Um, so it's like my heart and I'm, and I'm blacking out and I can't stop myself and I'm falling asleep. It feels like falling asleep and I can't stop myself. And, all I can remember was, is that there was no relief. There was no, there was no, I've accepted my fate. Do you know what I'm saying? All I could think is I'm not ready. And that's a horror, that's like the worst feeling to know, to say, I'm not ready to go. Wow. And fighting it, fighting it, but can't fight it. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm gone. And it just, and then I've woke up and there's literally in my bed, it's like sweat, you can feel it. It's like soaking. So I've gone to the hospital, they've checked me in. And I'm in the bed and I can hardly move. And they've checked me in. They've put me straight in the bed and they've gone, do you have insurance? And I've gone, no. And I'm half dead. And they're like, you need to sign this. And I'm like, what? what is it? I need to send it to my agent first. And he's like, he's like, bro, you sign it, we're not taking you in. So I'm like, all right, scrap, scrap. I didn't have insurance <coughs> because that's how I roll, bro. And then <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they took me to like the main, how I roll. yeah, they took me to the bed. I'm not going to pay a reasonable price yeah, of 14 yeah, I know. I pounds from post yeah, office yeah. to cover me for up to a million pounds. I'm going to fucking off. die. Yeah, yeah. Fucking crazy. So then they took me to the hospital bed and uh, and then I've w sort of woke up and they've gone, okay, uh, we've run more tests and you have influenza, but you've also got measles. And they've gone, um, so put on this mask and they put me in quarantine. 
and they put me in this quarantine. And someone had flown Nieces over. This is bad. Man. Yeah, and someone had flew over from England because they said, I said, am I all right? And they go, mate, you're fine. Don't You've got measles. What's going to quarantine you? You're good. Don't worry about it. She didn't say quarantine. But then they've put me in the quarantine and someone's from England flew over and they've gone, how is he? And he's gone, oh, like, yeah, you nearly died. Basically, my lungs had hemorrhaged. So all of that was my, I couldn't breathe and my lungs had hemorrhaged. And they, and they were like, we wanted to put metal pipes in my mouth to my lungs to pump it, but I didn't have insurance. So like, it's a bit pricey. You're young, we think you'll live. Oh <laughs> so, my Yeah, 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 God. yeah. So my lungs had hemorrhaged. And um, and they, they were saying that, and they never told me this because they were like, they didn't want to scare me. But they said like, um, your lungs had hemorrhaged. And that you could have, if you didn't come in, you would have been dead. And uh, That is insane. But it was mad is I started uh, going mental. Like, because the thing is with that is like, I'm telling you, I would drink water like, like five bottles, six bottles, like yeah. gall- and still be thirsty. Why? Like I'm sweating all of it out. Are you just sweating, sweating, I'm sweating? Sweating all of it out, so I can big, like, it's sort of like, oh, what's funny is though, I, I fucking missed it, but going back is, when I went to the doctor the second time, he's like, yeah, I mean, I think you got measles. And I said, give me every STI test you got. Because <laughs> I just told myself, like, I've got gonorrhea, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's what I got. Now, I've got, I've, I've got I've the got guns, it. bro. So I was like, that's why I had to give me every STI test. <laughs> and he did the STI test the best because I took all the tests and you go upstairs and there was a lot of guys taking STI tests in Thailand. <laughs> and then I sort of gone downstairs and then the guy, like the doctors brought me in and, but, and he, he didn't do that thing where he walks you in the room and then tells you. He just, as soon as he met me in the lobby, goes, you're good. Like, which is the best way to do it. Like, you're good. You ain't yeah, gonna. you want to know it straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, he's one of those straight away. <laughs> yeah, Don't yeah. long me out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I've gone, um, so they put me in quarantine yeah. and I'm sweating to the point that I'm going mental. Like I'm, I'm, I've, I've, I've kind of like, I'll be waking up and thinking I'm dreaming and dreaming and thinking I'm awake. Like there was one time I had, the weirdest dream I had was I was in hell and you ever seen Matrix? Yeah. You know the bit where they're outside the Matrix and having the party in the caves? Yeah. It was that, but it was a jungle rave. You know jungle music? Yeah. It was a jungle rave, but it was like, and I could feel the heat coming off the flake. Like it was fucking mental. And I was just like sweating. That's what a big like yeah, yeah. fever you yeah, were Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. I was like pissing and sweating and just fucking, couldn't shower because there's no shower. Because it's, you know, it's like, it's a good hospital in Thailand, but it's still, you know, not um, the most advanced yeah, 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 hospital yeah. in the world. Then it's quarantine. And it's not a quarantine. It's just a room no one's using and they've put plastic on the door. <laughs> and I've got- This is intense. Yeah, and it's like the nurses are coming in, but the nurses don't speak English. So it's hard to communicate. And for some reason, and I kind of don't remember it, it's the person I was with because I woke up and my back tooth hurt. And I'm like, why the fuck is my back and my mouth hurting? And basically what happened was, is I had convinced myself that my tooth was making me sick in the back of my mouth. <laughs> And I was convinced about it. And everyone's explained to me, it's nothing to do with your tooth. I'm like, no, I've got an infection in my, and I can't remember this. And if I've got an infection, I've got all the doctors to come. And I was like, I want the tooth out. And the lady, and apparently the doctor was like, it's a bit chipped, but it's fine. You know? And I was like, I need, I want it out. And I wouldn't stop asking him for my tooth to come out. So she just did it. No, she didn't. She just did it there and there. <laughs> oh. she, just, she just did it. Oh, and apparently, like, she was like, and apparently God. she was saying, like, look, I'm not really qualified to do it. Like, I'm not a tooth, like, not a dentist. Not a dentist. Like, I'm and not you re- were just freaking yeah, out. Yeah, she goes, I'm not really qualified. Like, maybe I should get, like, maybe wait tomorrow. In the de-. And I was like, <laughs> get now. Get it fucking out now. I was like, get it out now. And it's Thailand, so if you pay for it, they'll do it. And she literally goes, all right. And then apparently it was oh her my God. with her clam. And she, apparently oh. everyone in the room was this guy. And even the doctor was going, ah. <laughs> oh <laughs> and she yanked out one of my back teeth. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I went fucking mad. Like I literally went mad. And then I that come out of hospital. And this is like, and this is, and this was a big changing point in my life where I realized something about myself. And I've kind of stopped doing it, but I'll get there. Is basically my tooth. As I thought, so I've flown, I've flown back to England. Yeah, and my, I can't really see. I feel like when I look with my glasses on, it feels like I haven't got my glasses on. Is the best way to explain. Yeah, okay. it. like I've kind of like my eyesight's kind of bad. So I've gone to the eye doctor, and again I've gone to the eye doctor. Said so I'm going blind. He goes, Well, you have to come back tomorrow because you'll still be blind tomorrow. <laughs> So I've gone back to the eye. Oh, so I've gone to the eye doctor, and he's 
looked at my eyes and he's gone, oh, have you had anything happen to you recently? I told him what happened. He goes, basically what's happened is you were so dehydrated that your corneas are cracked in your eyes. What are the corneas? Your corneas are like the thin layer across your eye. So like the skin, like there's like a thin like That's how film. dehydrated yeah, yeah, you yeah. are. It's like a thin film. And it's not like I wasn't drinking water. It's, I was drinking fucking bottle loads of it, but I just, I was sweating it all out. So the thin film on my eye basically had got so dehydrated, it cracked. And so they had to get these eye drops. Is that dangerous? Um, it's not dangerous, but you got to like do shit it, about it. Right? Yeah. And this was the point is I took, uh, I took four days off and after four days, I flew to Australia and went and did a whole comedy festival. Oh my God. Yeah. That was the point where I was like, I need to slow down. Cause, Cause you're not looking like, after your body. You're just, oh, you're bum, 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 And bum, I bum. went and I did a festival for a month. When I did a festival, flew New Zealand and Australia and yeah. Fuck, and when I did there for a month. That is there. full on. And then the comedy festival, yeah. And I was like, and then I came back from the comedy festival and I was, I was dead, man. Like I was half dead. Even when I was out there, like I was getting chest infections. I was in bed. Of course, you yeah. literally died. Yeah, 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 I was dead. And then it's sort of like, it's when I got home, I realized I can't live like that. But is that because you have that same sort of thing, which is like, if you're not doing this thing all the time, it's so gonna go. Had. It's what the fuck else am I gonna do? Yeah, I get do you that. Know what I'm saying though, it's like, you just, it, it's like, it, it's it's the one thing that's truly makes me feel that thing of, you know, I feel content. Yeah, I feel comfortable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, I know exactly. And what it's you like mean. An, it's like I I feel comfortable. So it's like to not not have that. It's just it's not, I couldn't it, I couldn't imagine it. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I and it's like it's like it meant more to me than which was stupid. I'm not saying it's right. Yeah, but it's just how I am. Do you know what I'm saying? It just it means more to me. Talk to me about your stuff with Vice as well. Okay, yeah, yeah, that was a fucking long time ago. But it's not that long ago, is it? No, 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 it wasn't that long ago, but it was, uh, it feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, do you like doing those documentary style things or? Yeah, it wasn't the doc that bothered me, it was a lot of the other stuff. I, I sort of like, I think after the Vice show, I didn't want to be in TV for like about two years. Really? Yeah, I, I, I hated my job for like two years after that. Why? It was dealing with a lot of like- No control. There you go. That's you know, your controlness coming back it's in. It's a lot of that stuff. And, yeah, com com comedians have that. A yeah. lot of look, comedians, a lot of different people within that. Yeah, that it, was like, it was like, you know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy after in terms of post-production. It wasn't, it wasn't easy, you know. I'm not going to talk too much shit about them, but it was yeah. because I, I imagine I reading between the lines. It's where you want things to be said or happen that they don't happen because they have a different narrative they want to go down. Yeah, this is this is like a lot of stuff. There's a lot of you know, there's a lot of stuff that I think a lot of people forget because mm -hmm. they watch it and they see me now. And also the way I look, cause I've always looked old. I've always looked. Like, I didn't need a gold. No, but I've always looked this age. I've been looking like this since I was 14. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, I, I was like, I, I was like six foot when I was 14. Yeah. I, I saw, started growing beard early. And do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I was, so I always looked older than I was. Even when I was like a little baby. And when I was born, I was nearly a stone. I was like, I was always big. Oh and God. I was always, you know, and I remember like, it was be, my uh, people would be like, come up to me when I was like a baby and they go, why, why, why didn't he talk? But it was because I was too young to talk, but I just looked older. Do you know what I'm saying? Wow. And uh, stuff like that. So everyone always thought I was older. I always got treated older. Anyway, that's another thing. But I, um, that's quite hard though, to be treated always older. Yeah, is, I was is... treated like an adult from like a young age because people thought I was a man when I was a child. <laughs> that's yeah. like a weird combo. That's a weird, it's a weird thing. It's uh -huh. a really weird thing of being treated like a man, like always being treated like a man. That is hard. So wait, so when did your love for TV then come back? I think I had to find love in the stand up again and kind of yeah. be comfortable with that again. But what was the, I was going to make a point. About the vice, about not having control, about yeah. the post production, about TV. doing it, about TV. Oh, uh, it made me, oh yeah, people forget. Like when I made that show, yeah. I was like 24. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and I sort of made a lot of decisions. I was quite, not destructive, but I did destructive things. But I we think. all do that in our 20s, right? Yeah, of right? course, of course. But we all do. But the stakes were higher than I think it should have been at 24, like in terms of like, cause there's people that like, 
there might be something I did career wise at 24 that people still go, oh, I remember this thing. And you kind of go, fuck me. But it's like, you know what I'm saying though? And it's like, yeah. and some people still see you as that. You know what I mean? And I think- Dude, I, I have that. I, I, I'm i I'm stuck with that forever because of Made in Chelsea. Yeah. Like I am- Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I am totally stuck with that. And it, look, I, 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 it's funny though. I, I spoke about this the other day. It, it, Harry, St- I, I said on the podcast, Harry Styles like one of the most, you know, biggest- stars in the world at the moment right he yeah, he won the brit or he won the grammy whatever it was and he comes on stage and he can say anything he wants and he says i just want to thank my four brothers liam niall zane um that's it <laughs> and louis i want to thank I uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> i want to thank Who? my four brothers i want to thank <laughs> yeah. simon cow i want to thank the x factor yeah. and he kind of leaned into this sort of life that he had and you know that's strange to think that he was an x factor isn't it yeah yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah he's x-factor kind of, he's kind of transcended it but yeah 100 it's like a thing of uh, i guess you 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 kind of got and that i had it made in chelsea yeah. and it was you know main chelsea was what, what, what was it like when you first did it did you know what it was going to be no, Did no you know it's going to kind of be the sort of like cult thing? Man, no idea. I just, someone said to me, you can go on TV and you can have fun doing it and you can be with your mates. And I was like, that sounds sick. Yeah. And, and the other option was go down this road of having a job. And I was like, I don't want to do that. So I'll take How this How old were you when you did? 21. Oh, that That's young, young, dude. That and like, you're, you're just fucking around and we were just doing different things. And at the beginning, it was great. It was a hobby. It was yeah. a hobby. Yeah. And then we started making money and it became a job. Yeah. And then when it becomes a job, you're kind of in it. And then when you got to like 25 and suddenly all your friends had been in jobs for like two, three years, like yeah. working their way up and I still wasn't in one. I was like, well, this is now a career. Mm. And, it, and it, it, it's strange So that I did it for like 10 years or wow. nine years. It's a long time. time. Yeah. that show for a long time. Maybe nine years. It was a weird thing, that show, because it kind of, there's people I know that I grew up who, where, where I wasn't from Chelsea. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> And uh, they liked that show. And it was kind of like a yeah. weird. It was a weird like a thing. Yeah, someone... like, cause it's like, it's like, you know, I'm surprised people that I grew up with would, would, wa- would want to watch it. Because it's like, it's such a culture of I would know nothing about. And it was about a bunch of, you know, Which is good, white did... kids in Chelsea yeah. just did being posh and living yeah. on their parents' Re- money. Bro, a hundred percent. And it's just like, and it was, uh, but people. If someone pitched that idea now, they'd be like, that is the fucking worst did idea. Did you come, was it was Made in Chelsea before Towie? It was just after Towie. Yeah. But I remember, like, I used to walk. Around, I, I remember meeting so many people. Meeting people from the, this group of guys who were in prison, and they would, they would, they loved me because they'd watched me in because prison. Because you know why? Because it was always on. It was always on. Because I had a friend who just come out of prison, and they still read TV Guide. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just was like, bro, what? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They all get there with a little TV Guide and that. Because they still read TV Guide and they watch, like, they watch everything. They watch everything. They watch everything. There'll be yeah. shows that you just don't even know about. And they would be like, bro, they're on it. Made in Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. but it's like, because it's all like my granddad retired. Like yeah. old Jamaican man, yeah. retired. And he had nothing to do. So he watches One Tree Hill. Because <laughs> he's got nothing to do. I and don't want to be bro, it. He will bang One Tree Hill, bro. <laughs> like, it's seriously like some old Jamaican man in his 70s banging One Tree Hill, bro, following <laughs> storylines. So good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so proper into it. Like, when One Tree Hill comes on, don't fuck about, bro. Where's the remote? But One Tree Hill's on, bro. I gotta watch my program and that. One yeah. Tree Hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah, you watch One Tree Hill and that. Uh, but, like, yeah, it's like a weird thing of that. Like, they literally will watch just some. Um, Anything because there's nothing to do. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? How much? I, well, I'm so jealous. You've done Taskmaster. Oh, you want to do it? Oh man! But they, yeah, they, do, they do. They do comedians. I would just love to do, they do it. Um, they do like a other version, but no, like, they do like have a comedy actor on it. Is it that's great? If they have got the my one. It was Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte oh really? G from Ghost did it, and Kyle Smith did it. I, last would, time. I, I, I think if I say it enough, maybe they'll invite me just on. Just keep on fucking. Just keep on freaking. Or do you just turn up on the day that they are filming it? And, and like, just be like, hey, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because you're like famous enough, people go, oh, did, did, did we, we, we book, fucking we book, book that guy? Did we book Jamie? Yeah, this is going to be weird if we did Yeah, yeah, if we don't have him on, then you're kind of doing the time. Yeah, <laughs> fuck, I think we've booked him. Fuck, yeah, that was a it. fun show. That, that show, and I needed that show. I Why? Think, because I think I had just done the, you know, I was doing a lot of the Vice docs and a lot of the stuff I was getting offered was just like, let's, you know, let's go send you to, you know, uh, interview Somalian pirates and, rebel camps yeah i was just i was just or stuff i just didn't want to do yeah it was just real serious or it was either really serious or just not funny and i was getting offered a bunch and i just didn't and I you're just, just not into it no nah, i just went into it and then taskmaster was just mindless fun but really good and i needed i needed to decide to just it was just fun 
you know what I mean? And it was just like ridiculous and silly. And I think it, it was one of the, it was the first show that I allowed myself to be silly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and I think, you know, cause, and because with the, a lot of some other shows I did, I was kind of like a bit shook because I was like, oh, am I going to be made to look dumb? And you know what I'm saying? I know exactly. What and you then mean. I was like a bit, you know, and I was a bit tense antsy. about it. I was tense and I was a bit too overly tense sometimes. Like I'd be, like my first answer would be no a lot. And I'd be like, you got to talk me wrong because I know you're going to try to fuck me over. And I'd be like, what are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking yeah, yeah, about? You're, you're fucking, you've gone mad. But I did. <laughs> I've gone blind again. Yeah, I've gone I've blind. Gone, I've gone, I've blind gone mad again. and I take out my teeth. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I sort of went a bit too much. You, it's almost like a bit of paranoia. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I felt really, you know, uh, uncomfortable. And, uh, that's and, a, and that's a tricky master. space to be in because you, yeah, because you have to kind yeah, of. Yeah, you have to, you have to. Give over all to be some, There has to be some level of trust, you know. And do, and Taskmaster, there was just, it, the, everyone was cool. It runs like a fucking slick machine. Everyone was nice. And it was just, I was fun. There was no, you know, and there was no prep. It was just come in. Do it, go. Do it. And it was, you know, it was really fun. And it was during lockdown as well. So it was nice to do it during lockdown. What about, um, this thing, I, I, you just, you did the Late Late Show. Mm. Man, with Corden. With Corden, yeah, bro. That was, this is huge. Yeah. It was my first late night spot. How does that happen? So will you get a call up, you yeah, get an email, what happens? Yeah, it was an Cause I was, it was a, like, I was trying to get a late night spot for a while and no one wasn't really interested. And then I got an email from Corden's people and it was a lady who had seen me on Hate Down Name. She had come to my shows when I was, I used to do shows in America. So I was doing shows in LA and I toured America and stuff. Yeah. She would come to the shows. I didn't know who she was. She would just be in the audience. And she was like, yo, you should get this guy Jamali on. And then that's, and then they asked for a tape and I did the tape. And it was, it was a weird one because the t first tape I sent was the, was the bit I wanted to do. They had something happened and they had to delay me coming on. They're like, we're having you on, but we're gonna have to push it back a month or two. So that material aged out. So they said, totally. all right, we'll have you on in two weeks. So I had to like rewrite a new five minutes. And it was weird. It was like hard trying to like find older bits and then, you know Do you get saying? one shot? Yeah, it's one take. It's one take? It's one take. It's hard. And it's hard because- That's you, intense. You've you got to no, no yeah, water. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. And they, they, they cheer and laugh so hard and so much it's distracted. Like they clap so much because they, they just rail them up to that the point so of fever funny. pitch. So actually them clapping and laughing actually is off-putting. That is, it fucks up your time. Man, I went to Whitehall stand up and um, mm. he was saying, he's just come back from America and he said, I fucking love British audience because you have to earn the laugh. Yeah, it's honest. You have to earn that yeah, laugh. Yeah, 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 it's honest. And in America's like, ah, yeah, yeah. They go in. well, they go in and it's like, oh my God, this is too yeah. full on. I don't yeah, know, like, what's yeah, going yeah. on? So it's kind of fucked every time. But the, but the late night, yeah, man, it was a real. Um... <laughs> they're too cheery. Yeah, they're too cheery. <laughs> they're too cheery. That's one thing when I do shows in America. Like there's a bit I'll do in England where if the show's going really good, I'll go, man, this is going bad, isn't it? Like I, it's sort of me playing off the idea of like, this is shit. I yeah. fucked this up. I'm so sorry. When England, they get the joke. The yeah. joke is obviously it's not going shit, but I'm saying it shit. And what I'll do is like, you know what I mean? Like, like if my phone goes off, sometimes yeah. I'll forget to put my phone on sign. My phone will go off. So I answer the phone and I go, yeah, yeah, no, nah, yes. I've had better. You know, like I'll sort yeah, of talk yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. it. And in America, they go, in England, they would they would laugh, and in America, they go, "No, come to you doing well." <laughs> they just don't get yeah, the sarcasm. Yeah, they just don't get the idea <laughs> yeah, that I'm, the being, I'm doing the joke of that. It's go. I was like, "Yeah, I know it's not fucking going shit. <laughs> you fucking crazy bastard." Like, yeah, you can't. Like, I know. But yeah, it was. Um, but yeah, doing that was a real like. It was a real um, moment. Yeah, dude. For and sure. there's like, there a couple. There's been a couple moments in my career where I go these are the milestones that I really hold up. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a couple of things. There was like sold out show in New York was like- Amazing. That was that was like a real wow moment That's for me. wicked. Uh, doing sold out show in Amsterdam at the club always went to play. That was a moment for me. Um, and late night, that was another moment. You know what I'm saying? Like- What do you want to hit? If you, if, I mean- It changes, the man. It does really it? It does change. Yeah, yeah. Cause there's a lot, cause when I first started, all I wanted to do was shows in Amsterdam when I was 23. <laughs> And then it moved. Why was that? I don't know. It just kind of like, I always was kind of, Amsterdam for me always held this weird place in my mind when I was, especially when I was a teenager. Yeah. Like I always thought it was just kind of this cool, jazzy, dark. You know Amsterdam is cool. It is cool. 
it is cool. It kind of, you know, I know they got a problem with the tourism and stuff. Like it's too touristy, yeah. I think. But you know, and it had this dangerous feel. And I've always been like, I think that's kind of what led me to do sort of the doc stuff. Whereas I always kind of had an interest in the the other. I've always like, kind of had an interest in the stuff that you don't see, like what's behind closed doors. Like I always kind of was interested in that. And um, and yeah, and I always just, I just thought Amsterdam would just be this sort of free place. So you do that, then, then so you went to- You could like smoke cigarettes and talk about the government. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know why they had this sort of dangerous map. And, then, and then there was a club called Tumla, which is owned by comics, which is like a club I always wanted to play in. Cause like there was, a, there'd be like these specials they would release and it would be all my favorite comedians were doing like Doug Stanhope and Steve Hughes and all these comics. I don't know these guys. Who are the yeah, other? They're like, one's American, one's Australian. They're like these, they're, they're kind of like, they were like, Doug Stanhope was quite, Colt and big, but Steve Hughes was like a solid club guy. He was like, he done a lot of really? stuff back in the day. Anyway. Colin, you've been a complete gent today, yeah. dude. So I really appreciate giving you your time, man. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you, brother. Follow you, are you on social media. We'll leave all the links in the description. That's a powerful pinky ring as well, man. Yeah, dude, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been stuck. I've been looking at yeah, that yeah. pinky ring. I've like, that shit yeah, I'm down. trying to do it. I'm trying to be a gentleman like you, bro. <laughs> I bet you drink espresso after dinner, innit? You're like a gentleman, fan. He's the modern day Frank Sinatra. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Right, peace,